Chris Cook from 3M Commercial Graphics. Today I'd like to talk about curing of, uh, of prints. If you're running an inkjet printer that runs solvent-based inks, making sure that your prints are fully cured before you do anything with them, that includes laminating and applying them, is incredibly important if you want the graphics to perform. The solvent in the inks, the job of that is to basically soften the material and help the pigments actually bind their way and get their way into the material. But once it's done that, we need to give those solvents a chance to evaporate out of the, the film. Otherwise, that film will retain soft and it will be very difficult to work with and you can lead to lots of downstream problems such as loss of adhesion, edge lifting and curling, bubbles under laminates and so forth. So it is very important that we let those prints fully cure before we do anything with them. Let's go over the table and have a look at what actually happens to the film when there is still solvent trapped inside it. Okay, so here we have two copies of the same print. Uh, same file, same media, printed on the same printer. Uh, I'll get this first one and I'll remove the liner from the film and we'll see the way it behaves. What you find is the film stays nice and flat and this being a, actually a, a vehicle wrap film, it's slidable and repositionable. So, yeah, very, very easy to work with. But have a look at the same film where we've still got that ink solvent trapped inside the, the film uh, where it makes the film very soft. You can already see that it's starting to curl up and actually wanting to stick to itself. <laughs> okay, there we go. Uh, and now that's not going to pull apart. And what you'll notice is as soon as it touches the surface, it, it wants to stick down and it very quickly turns into a very soft uh, mass it's kind of like chewing gum. It's very soft and stretchy and it's, it's very, very difficult to work with. Okay, so if we're going to cure our prints, the most effective and the fastest way to do it is to hang the prints vertically. Uh, we've got plenty of exposure to air, lots of airflow pass to help evaporate those solvents. This is always going to be the fastest method for curing your prints. The problem with it is that it takes up a lot of space. So what a lot of people do is they loosely coil the prints as we've got over here. So rather than having the print hanging vertically, we've got it sort of coiled up um, uh, with space between the wraps on the coil. If you're going to use this method, there's two very important things that you need to do. The first thing is make sure that there really is a very definite gap between each wrap on that coil. If you've got uh, two places where the film is basically touching itself, there's no air space, there's no airflow, therefore there's, there's no curing. The other thing you need to do is make sure that you actually get the roll up off the floor. Don't have it sitting flush on the floor because then that bottom end is sealed and there's no way for the air to circulate through that coil. So lift it up off the floor, only um, you know, 50, 50 millimetres or so, uh, sitting on a piece of mesh just so that the air can actually circulate through that coil. Now this process will work, it's loosely coiling, but you do need to be aware that it will take longer than hanging the prints vertically just because there's not as much airflow through that coil. Now, I have seen people uh, actually build fans into this. I'll have a, a, like a mesh uh, stand and actually have fans from the bottom blowing air up through the coil. And that will absolutely make it happen faster because again, uh, the curing is a, an evaporation process. The more airflow you can get past that print, the quicker it will cure. The question I often get asked is, how long does it take a print to cure? Is it 24 hours, 48 hours, 72 hours? It really depends. Uh, it depends on lots of factors. It depends on what type of ink you're using. It depends on what method you're using. Are you using the vertically hanging method or the loosely coiled method? It also depends on the environmental conditions. The warmer and the more airflow you have, the faster the curing will happen. So what I suggest to people is go back to your own workshop using your own uh, environmental conditions, your own equipment, and, and test your prints to see how long they actually take to cure. And there are some quite simple things you can do to test your prints to figure out when they are fully cured or not. And they're all kind of based upon the fact that a fully cured print will behave virtually the same as an unprinted piece of film. So um, what you can do is uh, run a test print uh, off your printer and then set it up to cure in using whatever, me whatever method you, uh, you use, whether it's hanging vertical or loosely coiled. And then every few hours go back and test it to figure out whether or not it's cured uh, yet. And there are a couple of things that you can actually check for when you're doing that. Okay, uh, the first thing you can actually check for is, is odour. Most solvent inks do have quite a distinctive odour and you can actually smell when there is still uh, solvent trapped inside the print. So just check the smell. So. 
can certainly tell that in, uh, in this one, I can sit, still smell the solvent. So actually compare your printed, maybe an unprinted piece of film, or have a reference print, one that's been, uh, you know, that's several weeks old that you know is absolutely 100% cured. So you can check, first thing you can check is the odour. But the test I like to do and I find most reliable uh, is something I call the scratch test. I'll actually, with my fingernail, just drag my nail over the surface with a little bit of weight. And when I do it over a print that's fully cured, my nail just slides quite smoothly over the surface. But when I try it on an uncured print, what I find is that my fingernail just digs into that very soft film and drags and starts to actually scratch and damage the, the material. Uh, I find this a very reliable test because it's very easy to tell when that uh, film is still quite soft. Um, what I'll often do is run my nail from the unprinted margin of the print onto a dark section. Uh, and if the print's fully cured, I shouldn't be able to tell the difference between the printed and unprinted sections. If I can feel my fingernails start to dig in when I get to the print, I know that that print is still not quite fully cured. So I go and run those tests every few hours until that print is fully cured, and then you'll know, you know in your environmental conditions, with your rinks uh, and your setup, do your prints take 24, 36, 48 hours to fully cure. Okay, so print curing is a very important part of your printing process if you're running a, a solvent-based printer. Uh, if we work with prints that are not fully cured, as I mentioned earlier, you will have all sorts of uh, problems downstream. You'll have adhesion problems, you'll have edge lifting and curling, uh, you may get bubbles forming under the laminate, and also the, the material will be extremely difficult to apply and you're much more likely to, to ruin the application and have to reprint the, uh, reprint the job. Uh, so curing isn't very important. It is easy to, to test for. Test your own prints, figure out how long they take to cure, uh, and then change your production processes if you need to. Uh, now this is mostly very important for anyone running a solvent printer. For those of you who are running UV curable or, or even latex, uh, latex inks, uh, it is still possible to run those printers uh, in a print mode that uh, doesn't have the prints fully cured when they come off the machine. So it is also important to make sure that you're running your print settings correctly so that you do have fully cured prints. Anyway, this is uh, Chris Cook from 3M Commercial Graphics. A uh, little bit of information on print curing. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And, and once again, if you have any comments or, or questions, uh, please leave them in the comments field. Um, that, we'll uh, see you next time. Thank you.